<laughs> All right, so I want to welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, we know we have one person uh, who can't hear. We've been trying to show, troubleshoot that, but he is able uh, to see the captions. So I'm going to try to work with him later. Um, his name is George Carafa. He's a Vietnam veteran and got in touch with me through the helpline. And we're going to try to get him on board uh, as one of our veteran uh, members. Um, we're going to try to save questions later uh, that you can just raise your hand or you can use the chat feature and I'll try to uh, keep track of that. And also, uh, I want you to be sure to fill out the evaluation that's at the end of the Zoom invitation that you received. So uh, our, first, uh, our first topic is uh, Lauren. Uh, he's going to Again, uh, and I say again because it's intentional, we thought it valuable to give a brief reorientation to the virtual demo center because we found that, that that's a very valuable resource to have uh, right now, especially when we are all virtual. So Warren, are you set to do that? I'm all ready. Yeah, just, just a quickie for, for the new visitors. Uh, the virtual demonstration center is the ability to watch our demonstrations online, and it's accessible by, by the chapter web page. So you know how to get into that uh, hearing loss Rochester.org, and then there's an icon there to help get into the virtual demo center. All right. Okay. All right, let me share my screen. And there it is. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Okay, that is a, uh, Eric just referred to this. This is uh, our homepage. H, um, hearing loss rochester.org and that's the easiest way to get to the virtual demo center so if you go to that link you'll see this screen and on the screen you'll see a little box up here that says virtual demo center so i'm going to click on that and i apologize here but all these clicks are a little bit slower when we're in a zoom session and what you'll see here is really just a sampling of a few items that we have in the live demo center uh, that's open every, you know, er, the third month, third Thursday of every month. And then if you scroll down just a bit, you'll see a little uh, text on the virtual uh, demo center, virtual assistive listening device demo center. You can see why we call it the demo center. And you just click on this box right here, and that takes you uh, directly to it. As Eric mentioned, the purpose of the demo center, of the virtual demo center originally was to help people who had come to the live demo center uh, to help them go into more depth on their own without having to ask us any questions. It gets pretty hectic in our demo center sessions down at lifespan and it's noisy and, and people don't get to ask all the questions they want. So they can go back and look at what they have heard. This is the first page and it's just a little explanation of saying that if you haven't been here before, please check out the overview and also the guide and you just click on those orange links. And you can also, if you want to, when you're done looking or even before, just click on this link to leave a question or a suggestion. Maybe you think there's something we should add to it or something we need to explain better. So what I'm going to do is most people will do is just click here to see the devices and more. The way this site is laid out, 
hopefully it's uh, fairly easy for people to, to navigate. We're using images to help people understand where they want to go and what they want to see. So when you click this link, you'll uh, take a deep dive into the demo center devices. If you want to look at other devices that we don't have in the demo center, uh, you can go to this link and I'll explain that in a minute. If you wear hearing aids or cochlear implant and you want to see what kind of assistive uh, listening device accessories they have for their hearing aids and cochlear implants, you can click here. And by the way, this is where we recommend uh, for those users that they start because the best, well, in my opinion anyway, uh, the best assistive device you can get for a hearing aid is one that's made by the manufacturer. So that's a good place to start. Also, if you have a smartphone or a tablet, uh, there are a number of apps. Uh, we're filling this in slowly. There are many more apps than we show here, but apps that uh, actually act in a sense like an assistive listening device. So it's worth checking that out too. A lot of people are getting more and more interested in over-the-counter hearing aids. So you can click on this link and it will help you understand that a little better. There's also a learning center uh, where you can see some videos that will help. And also for people in Rochester, we have hearing friendly venues. So you can click on this and see the local facilities that offer uh, um, assistive help like uh, sound loops, you know, for hearing aid and cochlear implant wearers. Um, and uh, other devices. And finally, uh, some purchase devices to help with that. So let me just start. Actually, I'm going to just go to the uh, two devices. And I'm not going to go into depth on any of this, but I want to give you a bit of an orientation of what we have. And then I want to turn it over to Eric, who has some uh, fairly detailed information on remote mics that you might be interested in. So we have our demo center devices, both at the live demo center and here on the virtual demo center, sort of categorized into uh, a few different areas. The first one is personal listing and accessories. So you see products like the pocket talker and a FM system, a personal listing system. Uh, a conference mic that you can use in conjunction with a pocket talker, for instance. Also a shotgun mic for directional picking up, uh, you point it at people to uh, pick them up then, let's say in a small crowd. That also works with the pocket talker. There are some devices which I feel are in the league of their own, really. And they're the newest and, and best devices that I personally have found. These are made by uh, a company called Wear and Hear. And they actually will, uh, with an app that is associated with them, that you can download for free, they will give you a hearing screening check. And at the end of that check, you pretty well know what your, um, your hearing profile looks like. That is, which frequencies you hear good at, which you don't hear so good at. But what the really neat thing is, when you're done with that test, the um, app will download those parameters, your hearing profile, right into the amplifier on these uh, headsets. And then, so if you're not a hearing aid wearer, let's say, uh, you can hear almost as if you're wearing hearing aids. In my case, I can hardly tell the difference between my hearing aids and what I hear without my hearing aids in when I'm using one of these devices. There's also a, a transmitter for it. So I said I wasn't going to talk about the devices and I got sucked into it <laughs> by my <myself. laughs> So let me stop right there and just go to the next category. Uh, there are various amplifiers if you have mild hearing loss that might be helpful like phones, for instance. We have some of these in the demo center. I was sort of impressed. I, I had tried that one, and I was impressed with how well it actually worked. There are caption phones, if you're familiar with that or not. And by the way, you can ask questions about any of this. 
uh, any of these things if you're not familiar with them. And once again, all of these links, there's not just a picture here, there's also a link when you click on the image. And I'm gonna do that just to show you. I click on the caption call, caption for an image, and it's gonna take me directly to the caption call uh, website for that product. Uh, well, it won't take me quite directly. It'll say it's available in the demo center for test and evaluation. Click here to leave this website and go to the caption call website for more information. And then when you're there, to return to the virtual demo center, you need to close out that external website, just like when you're visiting any other website that references a different one. So I'll click here and let's just see where we go. And I won't go any further with it than that. So you see you're being redirected to the captioncall.com website. And once you get there, you can find almost anything you want to know about their, their phone and um, caption call phones in general. So I'm just scrolling sort of quickly here to give you a rough idea. And you can even get in touch with them to ask questions if you want to. That's true of what I just showed you, the way you get to information on different devices is pretty much the same for all the devices that you will see on the virtual demo center site. They're all linked to either the manufacturer's website or to a reseller's website um, or to similar devices. You'll, you'll see a choice if you can, let me do this once more. I'm sorry, I'm taking a little too much time, Eric. But you're, generally, you're going to see this when you click on, let's say, the Pocket Talker. It'll say, "Click here to see product details on the manufacturer's website." Second option is to say, "Well, click here, leave this website, and see links to other retail sources." You know, in some cases, maybe the the product is is not available at this time from the manufacturer, but still, places like Amazon and other resellers might have stock. So you might be interested in, that, interested in that. And the third option is if you want to see similar products, click here and it'll take you to, a, a, it basically does a Google search and lists a number of different links that you can uh, uh, click on to see other, other products like this. Okay, so now let me get back on track again. I'm sorry, I have a hard time talking about this quickly. I always want to do a deep dive. <laughs> Lauren, this is Charlie. You, we actually have plenty of time, so yeah. you're fine. Okay, thanks. And then again, for people with either um, uh, uh, hearing aids or cochlear implants, or if you happen to have a, um, it's called a loop listen, uh, uh, you can, uh, these uh, products will be interesting to you. These are hearing slash induction loop devices. I assume everybody here is, is uh, very familiar with it. And ask a question if you're not, but I'll just say quickly, you know, there are, are small um, induction loops that you can set up in your house if you want to. You know? There's a loop pad, there are portable intro loops, um, which you will find, by the way, in many, uh, many retail stores now. Here in Rochester, Wegman Stores is one that has hearing loops at their customer service counter and their pharmacy counter. Yeah, and, you can get them on Amazon too. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, that's true with all of, this, uh, all of these things, I think. And then induction loop receivers, if you uh, are at a lecture and and you want to hear the speaker, but there's no induction loop. Uh, whoops, this is just the receiver. If there is an induction loop, but you don't wear hearing aids, you can have one of these things and plug uh, a headset into it and you'll pick up uh, the speaker's voice very clearly. And then there are neck loops as well. And finally, alerting devices for people who are profoundly uh, hard of hearing. There are alerting devices like phone alerts and doorbell alerts. Uh, there are 
door knockers. If you're traveling, you hang this over the door of your hotel room and somebody knocks on the door, the light will flash. If you don't hear the alarm, there are bed shakers that come along with uh, alarm clocks. And believe me, when this thing goes off, you're going to wake up. <laughs> Very powerful. So that's basically what the uh, demo sounder devices look like. I'll mention again, just very briefly, uh, that in the devices beyond the demo center section, there is a very useful link to a, uh, a third party seller of assistive hearing devices. And that is called, they are called Diglow. They used to be called Harris Communications, yeah. but to do something recently that I find to be really interesting. And it helps you to find a device that might be interesting for your hearing loss. Uh, it, it's an interactive guide that'll ask you, you know, are you, here you go, here it is. I'm having some trouble hearing. I use hearing aids or, whoops, what happened? It shifted on me. Sorry, I'm moving it around so much, but it's uh, jumping on my screen. And you can tell it what the problem is. And I just say, I'll have some, I have some trouble hearing. And then it asks um, if you need a vibrating watch or timer, or I, or I need something to alert me, or I have trouble hearing people, et cetera, all these different things. Let's suppose I say I have trouble hearing on the phone. Then it asks more questions. Let's say I can't hear when I'm using my landline phone. Then it say you may need an amplified phone. And it gives you some options. In this case, they're only giving you one option and that's a cordless phone. And you can say I have a uh, moderate hearing loss. Wow, look at this. You may need an amplified phone. Okay, I want... Um, I call her ID screen. No, what do I want? <laughs> I suppose I want captions. It'll show you then some uh, products. There you go. And there it is. So I think you get the idea. That's what that's all about. So now I'm going to jump back up here. And I think I'll just leave the rest of these categories for you to explore. But I would encourage you, if you wear hearing aids or a CI, to start right here with uh, the manufacturer's accessories. Check that out first. And if you don't see what you want, uh, come over to demo center devices or maybe this. If you have a smartphone, take a look at that. And that is all I have to say. So unless there are any questions, I'm going to turn it over to Eric for a more detailed look at certain, uh, certain assistive products. Okay. You need to unshare your screen. Yeah. That's it. Can everybody hear me? Okay, I had some trouble oh. initially. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank God for captions. All right, I'm going to share my screen to get into the subject of external mics. Here we go. We're going to talk about external mics. Uh, let me see here. I got a picture of George. We see your PowerPoint, Eric. Okay. Now I, I see. Uh, in, so it must be it's just picking up on the speaker. Okay, let's talk about uh, external mics. Uh, Lauren alluded to the fact that there's 
things beyond the demo center. And in fact, they are. This is uh, one of my uh, fun hobbies. Uh, external mics amplify and clarify sounds in noisy or distracting situations. I'm sure you've all run into them. Uh, restaurants or dinner parties. No problem there, right? Uh, meetings or conferences, uh, including uh, church services. Uh, how about checkouts at the grocery store or some of the other shops? Do you ever have to ask the cashier to repeat themselves or speak more clearly? I have, uh, especially with COVID. How about the mask mumbling that goes on? Uh, an N95 mask cuts uh, speaker volume in half. Uh, so you got a problem there. How about moving vehicles? I have an external mic that I put on my wife so I can hear over the tire noise and I can hear the radio. Uh, and that's, that's in a, a standard vehicle, not a deluxe. Uh, how about discussions with your, your uh, doctor or your, your uh, medical provider or your dentist? Uh, that can be an issue because you want to get it right. You want to get it clear. Um, how about uh, the TV if you don't have a, a proprietary uh, connector? That can be an issue. Uh, how about non-ADA compliant locations. We all know that the ADA requires that uh, public venues uh, provide reasonable accommodation uh, for folks with uh, hearing loss. A lot of them don't. Well, you have to self-advocate. I mean, part of the equation is you, you have to have equipment of your own with you to make up the difference. I carry it with me. And I take uh, uh, the opportunity when they say, what's that? I take the opportunity to say, this is something you should have, uh, be it a counter loop or whatever. Uh, there's, oops, there we go. There's several types of, of uh, external mics. Some are wired, some are wireless, depends on the, how you intend to use them, which one makes sense for you. Some are offered by the hearing aid maker. I know I have some from mine. Some of them, if you're uh, more uh, mechanically inclined, you can do yourself and make them, in fact, universal by virtue of uh, standard earphones or neck loops for folks with with T-coils. Uh, some are equipped with microphones. That, uh, some of the systems have mics that are directional. You can point them at a speaker and uh, it will ignore a lot of other noise. Some are uh, on conference table type mics. You can set them in the, in the middle of the dinner table or the conference table and pick up all the people uh, that are around you. I have one of those, and I'll show you. Some are battery driven, some are rechargeable. Um, some of them use neck loops, some of them use earbuds, some of them use earphones. It depends on uh, uh, how the uh, listener uh, prefers and is technically set up. Um, I've got several here that I wanted to show you. This is a standard pocket talker, wired pocket talker. See if I can get the, there we go. This is a standard pocket talker. It's got a, a mic, just a short stubby mic plugged into it. And it's got an earphone. Uh, and you can point this at people. You can set it in the table. Uh, if you want to hear in both ears, you can put a, a, a set of uh, standard uh, double earphones on it. And please. Conference room setting, you can plug in a conference room mic instead of the, uh, the little stubby mic that's there. 
a lot of different options. Uh, if you really want to get a stretch, you can even use a, an audio cable uh, uh, extension that lets you uh, put it way over yonder and still hear. So that's the, the simplest uh, setup, the standard wired mic. And that one is made, uh, there's several available. That one's a uh, William Sound, it's called a pocket tucker. Is called the super ear. You can see there, there you can see it. Uh, this was uh, considered, in fact, uh, by the New York State court system uh, for folks in the in the jury. Uh, there's others that are looking at it as well, but this is this is quite handy. It's got a rotary on-off volume switch, and again, you can have a choice of uh, listening devices. It's got a single mic. You can uh, uh, put an audio extension coil on it and hear just about anything that's that's going on. This is not terribly expensive. People say, well, how about Bluetooth? Oh, I looked into that. This is a Bluetooth said uh, this is a Bluetooth transmitter. You can get them at uh, any one of the mail order shops. Just uh, say Bluetooth transmitter receiver. Uh, this is a, again a pocket talker amplifier. So once the signal comes uh, is is picked up by the microphone, it's amplified, sent out by the transmitter. Now we all know that. Bluetooth is a uh, fairly power consumptive. So uh, uh, while this transmitter has a built-in battery that will last a while, I've added uh, a credit card size external battery uh, just to make it suitable for extended use. And the receiver looks like this. Uh, again, you have your of listening devices, depending on whether you have a, a T coil and it can use a, a neck loop or whether you want to use a standard uh, earphones. This receiver looks a whole lot like the transmitter. And uh, again, I've uh, attached to it a, a uh, credit card size battery to give it a little more extended life. Uh, it works very well, uh, but again, it's a little bit of a uh, bigger expense, uh, particularly once you have to add the, the external batteries. Uh, like the others, you can attach a conference mic or you can use uh, uh, a neck loop if you've got a take off. Now beyond Bluetooth, The one I like is UHF. Usually with Bluetooth, you get a little processing delay in the sound. It's called latency. But with UHF, it's hard to pick it out. This is a UHF, UHF transmitter with a mic, uh, stubby mic built in. And if you, you just... Uh, go to one of the sources and, and uh, search for uh, transmitters and receivers UHF, you'll come up with something like this. Uh, most of the lavalier mics that you see advertised uh, are UHF. Uh, that uh, sends a signal out, that's rechargeable, and sends a signal out uh, to a, a receiver. And I've plugged the receiver into uh, what's called a headphone amplifier. Again, all available online. And then that goes out to an earphone or a neck loop uh, or whatever uh, listening piece uh, suits you. 
this works tremendously well. Uh, I very often take this to a, a Friday morning book club at the, at the restaurant. We have breakfast with a bunch of us. And uh, uh, rather than use the one I got from my hearing aid uh, maker, I use, use this one. Works uh, almost as well. And I'll describe the differences in a minute. Uh, very compact, totally rechargeable, uh, not terribly expensive. Uh, finally, let's see, finally, final among the do it yourself stuff is this fellow. This is from Radio Shack. Yes, they're still with us, but online. They're closing their stores, but if you go to radioshack.com, they're online. This one intrigued me a little bit. The microphones and amplifier are all built in. Uh, uh, I've got an external volume control uh, plugged into it, an inline volume control, and that goes out to your choice of listening device. The thing I like about this is that it's got a 3-band equalizer built in, so you can do a pretty good job of controlling treble and bass to suit your hearing loss uh, in this device. Uh, and again, if you want to, this has the mics built in, so if you want to put it in the middle of a table, it's nice to have one of those audio extension cables. And again, if you've got T-coils, you can uh, use a neck loop. That gets us down to the hearing aid maker stuff. Um, I've got a, a small mic that I hang on my my wife, it's called a partner mic, uh, I'd have people that make my hearing aids. And it, it hangs on her neck like a necklace. And everything she says goes directly into my ears. Uh, it's, it's really uh, very handy. The same company makes uh, these, and get a hold of it where you can see it. You see, it looks like a circular disc. This is called uh, uh, a partner, Roger, uh, Roger Select Mike. Uh, again, by the people who made my hearing aids. But you're starting to get fancy when you get into the, the uh, uh, proprietary uh, options. This one has six different microphones, and I can select one or, or all six or any combination. Uh, it, it picks them up, sends them directly into my hearing aid. So I can set this in the middle of a, a restaurant table or, or a conference room table. Everything is said by anybody in any direction uh, or in whatever direction I've selected mics comes directly into, into my ears. Got a tremendous battery life. Uh, I don't know what kind of batteries they put in it, but they sure last. I've gotten eight, 10 hours out of this fellow. And the biggest danger is uh, forgetting it and leaving it on the table because it's so compact. So I've got a, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a uh, small uh, transmitter attached to it and I've got a receiver on my keychain. If I get more than 25 feet away, the alarm goes off. Uh, so you, you don't want to lose these and you can get in it. I lost devices to go with it. So that, that's the options now. If you're going to uh, look at these, everybody wonders about cost. Hearing uh, external mics from the people who make a hearing aids, the proprietary stuff run anywhere from $200 to 1000 It sounds like a lot, but uh, if it helps you to hear, I guess that's, that's worth it. Now, the wireless assemblies, uh, in this case, the Bluetooth new HF rigs that I showed you, those go for anywhere from $80 to $175 from the different sources. 
And it depends a lot on whether you're going to have headphones or an echo, uh, this sort of thing. Uh, the wired assemblies are any place from $60 to, to $90, which is starting to get into the every man's range. And that super air unit that I showed you, the white one, uh, is 60 bucks with regular earbuds, uh, but you add a neck loop if you want that. Uh, people say, yeah, well, it's money, yeah, but what you're hearing worth. And can, can you self advocate? Is it useful to have a device? People say, what's that? You can explain it as well as being helped by it. Anything I've shown you can be uh, uh, ordered from Amazon, from eBay, from Radio Shack, or from Diglo.com, which is Harris Communications. I think uh, Lauren mentioned that. If you have any questions, uh, you can email me on pemadson3 at verizon.net. And I'd be happy to send you a shopping list for uh, any particular combination that I showed you. Uh, I'm big into self-advocacy. I've been totally struck by uh, a quote from Helen Keller, who said that loss of sight isolates us from things, but loss of hearing isolates us from people. And if you need a little help with your hearing aids, particularly in noisy environments or group environments, an external mic is, just might be the thing that helps you. It certainly was for me. Uh, you'll notice in a lot of the cases, I said, if you have T coils, uh, uh, you can use a neck loop. I'm using a neck loop to listen to my computer today. Uh, it, it leaves my Bluetooth link to my telephone free, which is an advantage too. People say, what's a T-coil? Well, if you're smart enough to ask for it when you're getting your hearing aids, they arrive with a little coil inside in the audio circuit. When you activate it, the hearing aid becomes a receiver for whatever signals on your hearing loop or the room loop or the mat loop or the wall loop or whatever kind of loop is out there. I know uh, my, my uh, church, uh, we have a, a clustering situation going on with two different churches coming together. Both of them have inductive hearing loops. So when I go in, I can just get on my phone and say, activate my t coils and I can hear everything that's going on. It's wonderful, uh, but I've got I've got the uh, the T coils. Now I think Lauren mentioned you can get a receiver that'll pick up that same signal. That's basically a bigger box with all the same circuitry in it, and you can listen by virtue of normal uh, headphones. I've installed uh, uh, inductive loop receivers in both of the churches. And uh, people use them. It's it's uh, kind of a great introduction as to what's out there if you get uh, decent hearing aids. So uh, that's a T-coil. That's what it looks like. Very, very small. Might not fit in the uh, hearing aids that go completely in the ear and they're invisible. And if that's for you, that's fine. But uh, the, the clamshell hearings or, or hearing aids or behind the, the ear hearing aids do have room for these T coils, and they are offered from all of the top makers of, uh, of hearing aid. I, this is one of the things you can't ask for with over the counter hearing aids. I don't know anybody that offers it. Uh, but with proper hearing aids, uh, this this is standard option. Just sometimes you have to ask for it. Okay, I uh, see. I can probably unsave. Let me see here.
there. Great. Again, uh, Lauren and I are both happy to, to take any questions. So if uh, anybody's got any, uh, you certainly, uh oh, is Art sleeping? I must have put him to sleep. Let's not wake him. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, <laughs> my grandfather had uh, about four jobs at the same time to support his large family. But he every Sunday, he'd take his, his eight children to, to church. And uh, they fixed him one day because he had a habit of falling asleep during the sermon. And they, after the service, they got up and left him there sound asleep. <laughs> I think we ought to do that with our, he'll wake up and we'll be done. Uh, any questions? I see, I see Jean saying something, but I think she's muted. muted. I would say we have a lot to learn, and um, uh, I don't. I don't have any questions at this point. It's it's very very interesting. The options, I would say. Oh yeah. 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 I guess I would like to see, feel, touch, see how these yeah. goes together and what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, I know we're we're limited to some extent, but um, that would be. Uh, a nice option, which I think may be available. That's, that's one of the advantages of the live demonstration center, because you can pick it up, feel it, see it, try it uh, before you commit to it. Uh, that, that's a big help. Meantime, uh, I've got all this stuff here at my house, and I'm happy for visitors if you want to try well, that's, it. That's what I was we, alluding we, to. We may, we may get there. <laughs> uh, just drop me an email. I'll tell you how to get here. Oh, I, I think we know. Thank you. <laughs> Any quite other questions? See, everybody's Susan Miller has turned off her video. That she's left the room. <laughs> I'm going to interject. Uh, George Carafa, uh, I know you can't hear us. He's having audio problems, but you can read the captions. I didn't know if you had any questions about either presentation or just general technical questions because we can hear you. Yeah. I'm most interested in uh, uh, a device that will help me to listen to TV shows. Uh, uh, and uh, if I can go ahead and uh, get some information related to those devices, uh, that would be helpful to me. Uh, uh, you went through an awful lot of uh, information and it's very difficult trying to read captions and, and look at uh, what the screen shows. So I'm a little confused, but uh, uh, I think that if I can get um, onto the websites that uh, you mentioned, uh, that may be helpful and then I can go through them on my own. Um, yeah. I, can, I think that's a good approach to take. Yes, uh, certainly the virtual demonstration center talks about uh, TV connection devices. I have one again from the people who made my um, hearing aids. It plugs into the back of my TV, and I'm I'm lucky because my TV has a completely different sound circuit for the headphones compared to the regular speakers. That means I can set my volume independently of what my wife wants. And uh, we, we can both be happy. Now, sometimes some TVs don't when you plug in to the. It shuts speakers off. So that there's workarounds to that, but uh, that can cause confusion. Some of the newest TVs don't even have an headphone jack. All they've got is an optical output. And that kind of steers you towards a connector made by your, your hearing aid maker because most of them come with an optical input. 
and you can uh, go that way. Now, if using those jacks turns off your regular sound and your spouse wants to hear it, one possible solution is to buy a sound bar that has an output channel. So you plug the TV into the sound bar and then you plug your connector into the output of the sound bar. Uh, so that, that's kind of a workaround. But uh, I can help you with that. Lauren can help you with that. Charlie can help you with that. If you think you know what you, you want in the way of a connector, let us know. We'll take a look at it and then get back to you. Yeah, um, Eric, I've not seen any sound bars. I've looked for them, but I've not seen any of that have an output. Yeah, they're, they're few and far between. If, uh, if you go on to some of the advanced electronic stores, they've got one or two. Mm -hmm. uh, but like TVs, you almost need an old one compared to a new one. Well, yeah, they don't think about us. Yeah, there's a workaround for that too. Yeah. And what I do, my TV has only an optical output, nothing else. Yeah, you've got a new one. So what I do is I, I bought a, uh, and furthermore, when it's listening to some programs, it outputs in Dolby. Yes. So I bought a uh, converter. There's a little converter. It's real small. Yeah, it's a so little trick. When you yeah. plug it into the optical output, and the output of that little converter is a headphone jack. Yeah. And, an, and a pair of RCA jacks as well. Yeah. So that's one way to do it. Yeah. That works there's, pretty well. There's workarounds there. And I guess my point is, if you've got an issue, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll work with you on it. Dan, you had a comment a few minutes ago. Yeah, I was going to say proprietary ones are nice. Uh, I have a, it's called a TV streamer. It's basically what you're going to be looking for. Mm -hmm. The only problem is proprietary items are pretty costly. The one I have is $300. Yeah. Uh, I love it. It's great. I set it to my volume. The TV can be muted and I can still hear it or it will be set at a volume where I don't make everybody go outside, you know? <laughs> um, but you can't. I have two of those, and one of them I bought from the audiologist and paid 300 But once I knew what I had and what I needed, I want I have other TVs in the house. So yeah. I went on eBay and got another one. It, of course, there's a risk involved, but I was pretty confident in who I was buying it from, and I bought it, and I, I got it for $60. Yeah. So, and there's another one I'm thinking about buying, and for, you know, $60 again. So... You know, it's just... They're not I, expensive, no. No, but they can be if you're yeah. proprietary and you had to buy it right from the audiologist. But. Another one that I've seen uh, that some people like is uh, wireless headphones that plug into your TV. If you're going to go that route, uh, I suggest the, the uh, what they call over-the-ear headphones rather than on-the-ear because the over-the ear headphones will work better with the mics in your hearing aids compared to the on the ear. But again, we'll, we're happy to work with you on that. I also want to take the opportunity, um, George, you had a question about how much information. Uh, this session is being recorded and it will be available through our website probably by tomorrow. And yes, once yes. we finished, I can send you the shortcut link. So if you want to watch this, um, you certainly can. Yeah, it is, it is a great deal. I mean, that would be great. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I hope I can of... hear it. <laughs> I've, I've seen the, the wireless headphone rigs with two sets of headphones. So you can put one on your spouse and one on yourself, have independent volume control. The other solution, again, if you got a T coil, we can loop the room <laughs> and uh, everything goes directly into your hearing aids. You know what, what makes us so complex is that we all have different levels of hearing loss. 
different types of hearing loss. Some of us have a lot of distortion, others don't. You know, some of us just have, I guess it's rare, but some people have just a flat hearing loss, which means they just need a little amplification. So in that case, you can just, anything you can put right on your ear is going to help. But if you have, let's say, a severe hearing loss like mine, that doesn't help much. It makes the sound louder, but it still can't understand what they're saying. So, you know, in that case, you really need something, if you wear hearing aids, you need something that will pipe the sound through your hearing aid so it picks up your hearing profile as well. And, or you need something, I, I mentioned it earlier, this product, I almost sound like a salesman for it, but I've been so uh, impressed with it from the beginning. Uh, and that's the uh, uh, Be Here Now headset and Be Here Access headsets, because that has the TV uh, transmitter and the headset will pick up the TV signal from that. Plus, if you've taken the hearing test with your app, uh, with your wear and hear app, then it will be uh, contoured, customized to your sound problem, to your hearing loss. Now, that's that's for people with mild hearing loss, maybe up to the upper part of severe. If you have the lower part of severe or profound hearing loss, it probably won't help because um, it, the hearing test is kept to a safe level so it doesn't hurt anybody's ears. Therefore, hearing people with profound hearing loss won't be able to hear the tones. But that's uh, advice. I've been around an article this morning too about some research that's been done on on uh, pro, pro, word processing disorders. Apparently, up to six percent of the population uh, hears sounds, but struggles to process them and uh, have them make sense. So uh, that can enter into it too. There may be nothing wrong with your ears or very little, uh, but uh, mentally you're having trouble processing it if you're a part of that 6%. In that case, uh, the, some of the, the speech coaches uh, have tricks they can uh, use to help you. Does anybody have any general questions about uh, devices or technology. Uh, we've got about five minutes left. So uh, if it's something we can briefly respond to. You're muted, Art. There you uh, go. I went into a new problem with Zoom. And, and what it is, I've got a uh, <clears throat> fairly new laptop and it's been working great. But if now the last week or so, I get in a Zoom meeting about 40, 45 minutes, and all of a sudden I'm losing the um, the bar with all the control stuff on it. I can still hear what's being said, but then I start to lose the picture and so forth. And the only solution I found is to actually turn off my computer and sign back on. But I'm wondering if um, you've run into this and have any suggestions about what I'm maybe not doing or doing wrong. Dan, Dan has firsthand experience with that. <laughs> yes, um, Art, what you got to do is, is sign into your account and, yeah. and update to the latest version of Zoom. They just did a, they did a recent update not too long ago, I would say maybe a week ago. Okay. And then, then this problem that you're describing came on and you could, you almost have to alt control delete to get out of that program and rejoin. And then it will disappear again 45 minutes later. Okay. Um, but with the recent update, I haven't had that, that problem. And I've had two Zoom Great. meetings well over 45 minutes with no issues. Okay. For what, it, for what it's worth, uh, Zoom has updated their uh, uh, tablet software for Android and, so, and Apple, uh, as well as for Windows. So uh, it's probably true for tablets as well. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, that was, a, that was quite a problem. Anybody else? Um, what I usually do is we get close to one o'clock here, I can stop recording 
but we can keep, uh, I'll keep the captions going um, and we can stay on and chat for a while unless somebody has another technical question. Oh, okay, no. Thank you. How, how is everybody hearing? I, I, I know George, your speaker isn't working, but it, uh, everybody hearing on this session okay? Using the yes. neck loop or using the speaker? How you how you guys getting along? Well, let's see. Yeah, well, let's, this um, is the cheapest neck loop they can get, and it plugs in and works great. Yeah, I, I use a mini mic. You can I can maybe show you. I use a mini mic. And that streams it in wirelessly. Go ahead, Barb. You gotta you gotta unmute yourself, though, Barb. You're muted, Barb. You're you're muted, Barb. <laughs> Barb, we can't hear you. You're muted. Can you unmute? Oh, you. I see what's going on. She she needs to update her Zoom. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Maybe right. having the same problem if her controls are locked at the bottom or so disappear. They're gone. They 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 disappear. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. That's yeah. What happens. Yeah. You can hear, yeah. but you can't do anything. Yep. Yeah. On Pandora's box, I heard. Yeah. Right. Can you still read the captions? Shake your head. Yeah. Okay. Did you catch what Dan said? You're going to have to go into your Zoom account and run an update. Yeah. And the way you do that is to hit your icon in the upper right hand corner and then go down and check for updates. But you got to be signed in at the right location. Yeah. It, it's kind of tricky to find. It took me a while. Yeah, it took me a while yesterday. Yeah, you have to sign out. And yeah. So, folks, I'm going to stop recording, but we can stay on for a few minutes. Just give me a moment.